Welcome to our used 2017 Vista Cruiser 19 ERD. We're gonna start right in the back corner here. And in this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you've got these stabilizer jacks here. So what they do is they just kind of run down, contact the ground, give them another turn or so, and that'll just firm them up, get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you got in the unit right now, just keeping things planted while you're out camping. A step forward, we're gonna find your hot water tank here. So you just get that keyway up top, you're just gonna line that up and it'll pop on open. So all of your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before you ever turn it on though, you just wanna hit this relief valve right there. And if the tank were full, you'd get a little shot of water out of there, just letting you know you are in fact full. We're empty right now just because we've got the unit winterized. But like I say, if it were full, you'd get that shot of water out. If you're not getting that shot out, there is the, sorry, if you're not getting that shot of water out, there is the chance that you are empty. So you just wanna make sure it's full before you go fire it up, just so you're not running the risk of burning anything out. Like I said, your control for turning it on is inside. Once we get inside and use it, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Closing it up, just lining up that keyway, lock it back down, and there you have it. Another step forward, we've got that little square there. You're just gonna pop open the cap. You can see you get a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with that notch of your power cord. You're gonna kind of press that in, give it a little eighth turn, and it locks it into place. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. Down below that in the top here, we've got a satellite inlet. So you're just gonna pull this cap off of there and a coax cable will plug into there, fire up at your TV location for your satellite. Down below, it's very similar for your cable. You're just gonna plug it on into there, same idea. Straight down from there, we've got your low point drain. So you can see you've got a hot and a cold line there. You just be pulling that cap off, allowing the water system to drain itself out. Purpose of that would be if you've gone camping and you just wanna drain your water out so it's not going stale or stagnant for the next time you're out, you can just drain it out to do so. Secondly would be to get the water out for winterization purposes. So up from here, we've just got the stove in for you. So you get the two little ears on either side, just hold that flap closed. Once you release those, then you can see it's allowed to open up. So inside you, of course, got a propane stove. So whenever you are using it, that is putting off fumes. So you just wanna make sure that this flap here is able to open up so that you got that fan turned on. It's evacuating those fumes. Straight down from there, you've got the exhaust for your furnace. So you just wanna make sure that's not blocked off whenever you're running your furnace, it does get hot. A couple steps forward, we've got your city water connection right here. So you're just gonna pop that cap off and take your water hose and plug it into there, turn it on, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Behind that is a black tank flush. So you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know, for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically that's some debris inside of your tank just hanging between the two probes, causing a misread. So what you can do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water after opening up your black tank valve, and that'll just flush out that tank, getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. Your black tank valve, you're gonna find right down here. So on the left, you got your black, and on the right, you've got your gray. That might be backwards, don't quote me on that. But basically your black is gonna be filled through your black tank. So that's of course gonna be your dirtiest water. We're gonna wanna dump that first. And I do believe that is actually gonna be this front one here. So you'd be dumping that first. And then after that, you'll come to the back and do that gray valve. That gray valve is gonna be filled from your shower as well as your sink. So it's gonna be typically cleaner water. We'll dump that last just to help keep our sewer hose as clean as possible. We're attaching our sewer hose. You just got that cap there. You're just gonna kind of push it in and turn it off. And then you just see that it's got the same ears that your sewer hose will have. I'll show you that in a minute here. Another couple steps forward, we've got your fresh water connection up here. So you're just gonna pop that cap off of there and take your water hose and plug it into there. Turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. The drain for that fresh water tank is just straight down from there. You'll find that little blue hose here. You just got the valve there. You're just gonna open it up, just drains itself out. One end of your storage compartment here, so it does see straight through to the other side. So we'll open that up in a minute too as well. Around the front, you get the little scare light there. So it's got its own switch out here. The sewer hose is housed into this little box here. So we're just gonna pull that little end cap off, reach in a little bit. We've got your sewer hose here. So those two ears, you just be attaching it onto your sewer hose just like that, or your sewer system, sorry. And we're just keeping it stored up in the front here. It's still in the holder, just helps keep any sort of stench out of the trailer. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is 20 feet long. Stuffing it back in there and take the cap and press it in. Kind of tap it into place and that locks it down. Inside of this box here, you'll find your battery. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. Underneath this cover here, you do get access to your two propane tank valves for the video off. And then in the back here, you can see we've got our change over there. Right. So we're currently pointed over to this tank, open this tank up. That'll be it turned on. And then if you just watch that change over there, it should turn green, just letting us know that we've got propane present. If it's red, it's just letting you know there is no propane there. So at that point, you just be turning it off. 
taking our arrow and flipping over to the other tank and running off of this one while you get the other one filled. In the front, you've got your power tongue jack. So on the left is the light switch. And then on the right, up is up, down is down. In the corner, we've got the other end of your storage compartment here. As you open that up, you just get the little magnetic latch up top, holds it open. Up inside on the wall, you get the little light switch, does your little light strip back there. Previous owner did leave their weight distribution hitch behind, so we've left that in here for you as well if you choose to go with that. We've also got the water hose here for you, as well as a park adapter. So standard 30 amp end right there, so your short cord will plug into there. 15 amp into a standard household outlet if you wanted to charge your batteries or run your fridge. Most campsites typically will have a 30 amp that you can just plug straight on into. And this little plug right there, this little, little two-prong plug, just for your solar panel, just plugs in, charges your batteries, easy to go. Closing that up. <laughs> Towards the back, we find a G5 protected outlet here. So resets just inside the unit. Cable and antenna outlet there. So coax cable just out of there into a TV. So if you got, if you wanted to have a TV outside, you have the power to do so. Fridge, ver fridge vent, so just a service port there. Nothing for you to worry about, really. And then towards the back of the unit, just is what it is. Right. We'll make our way inside, just opening up the door. Door's just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. For your step, you're just gonna grab it and pull it on out. It sits into place, and then you can make your way in. Once we get in here, we get the light switches up on the wall here. The light switch on the very left does your interior lights. Light switch on the I guess center left. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. So this little light switch right here is actually going to be a step outside. So that step that we pulled out illuminates that. This light switch on your left is going to be your awning light. So once they're done with the power tools over there, we'll show you that. And then this light switch on the right is a porch light outside that little amber light. So once they're done, we'll go through the awning in a bit there as well. So straight up from there, you're going to find is actually a TV backer. I think it's up here actually. Just put it on a mount and kind of swivel it around or around the corner. The 12 volt outlet for a TV, cable and satellite outlet for a TV as well as your antenna outlet, sorry. So on the right, you get that little button there, turns on that green light, just letting you know that antenna's turned on. That here's your cable and antenna cable and satellite outlet. And then over here, we've got your AV cables. So those are all linked into your stereo, which is just on the back wall here. Power outlet for a TV as well. Straight down from there, you're gonna find your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector would. Speaking of smoke detector, that guy's just over here. There you go. So you can see you got two speakers up back there. And those are going to be, I believe, your speaker set A on your stereo. So power button there, turn it on. And we got your seeks down here. Just find something. There we go. So speaker set A is your inside set. Speaker set B is your outside set. And then speaker set C, I believe, is just blank. So the volume there in your knob, kind of all your settings through it as well. And then really mode get your auxiliary through the front here auxiliary two is through the back auxiliary four don't know what that is av would be those cables that we showed you by the door and then just back to am fm i believe oh bluetooth as well look at that and then fm all right so power button there turn it off and then we get a little bit of storage across the back here above your dinette you get the little light there so all the lights throughout the trailer just have their own little switch on the side get another one right above the sink here you also have a light up here to do your little pendant light there. So for your sink covers, you just get the soft plastic covers, so nothing hot on there. Mobile head. You get the light as well as the fan here. So this is that fan that you of course want turned on whenever you're using your stove because we are putting off those fumes. So I'm just gonna open it up, grab a lighter, and then right in the back, we'll turn that over to a light, hit it with a lighter, and she fires right up. Now the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if it's been a while since you've been to the camper, it may take a while just to clear all the air to the propane lines before anything fires up. That's perfectly normal. So from there, you got your microwave here. So pretty standard, just like home. Bit of storage off to the side of it as well. And that plug-in back there is just for the microwave itself. Some more storage down below, as well as some drawer space here. 
got kind of the return air for your furnace right here as well. So through this little compartment, you do have a little GFI protected outlet there, as well as a little outlet for your furnace. You can see that we are missing our cushions. So we do have just a little bit of storage down below them, as well as back here. Once it comes time, if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself, right underneath here, you're gonna find your hot water tank so you can bypass all of that. In the back, you've got your blinds here. They're pretty well all the same throughout the unit. They just sit where you leave them. This window back here is an emergency exit. So you'd be pulling this red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside and hop on out. Above my head, we've got your air conditioner. So you will see right here, it's got the option optional heat there. That does not work, it is not hooked up. We do have a dedicated furnace. So you just have over to the side here would be just your fan. So there's no cooling involved. You're just moving air there with low, medium, and high fan. Once you get into the blue side here, that's your cooling. So that's where the compressor will actually kick in. And then you get that also on medium and low fan. And then with the air conditioner going, you've got a couple of different options here with all the louvers. You can have this set here open and we're just kind of dumping into the living room. You can close it off and open up the ends and shoot it throughout. And then just off. So, fr fridge here. So we've got the power button on the left. So with it close to flush, that's going to be it turned on. You'll see it run on auto. Auto is gonna first look for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out boondocking and you want it solely running off of gas, have this button on the right here come out. It'll run just on gas. If that check light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, just off and on to reset it. And if it still doesn't fire up, just make sure you got propane. So up top here, you got your freezer. And down below, we got the fridge. Temp control is just in the back there. And as the sticker says, up is colder, down is warmer. Down from there, you've got your converter. So just press the top and center, it pops on open. Get all of your breakers down the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, you get all of your fuses. Then we've got your shower here. So standard head and hose, hot and cold water, of course. This door here, if we open it up all the way, it does actually close off from the living room. And then in the bathroom, you get your light switch up on the wall. We've also got your hot water tank switch here. Switch right there, you're just gonna turn that on. That red light there is gonna come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light goes out, the sequence has started and it's gonna try that three times. If after that third try it hasn't fired up, this light's gonna come on and it's gonna stay on. At that point, we'll be going and using that reset button that we'd shown you. So sit right here, you can actually hear the whir of the flame. We know it's good. Down from there, you've got your toilet. Just open that up, flush is front and center. Another little furnace outlet there, toilet paper dispenser up on the wall here. We've got your GFI protected outlet. So test on top, reset on the bottom. Medicine cabinets, as well as your little hot and cold sink there. A little bit of storage down below. Of course, being mindful of all of our water lines, you don't want to be breaking those. And now up into the bedroom. So your light again, just up on its own switch there. Roof vent here, just gonna turn to open. Super simple. Around the corner, up on the wall, got your thermostat on top. So with that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. With it all the way over to the right, that's it max heat. Anywhere in the middle is going to be your temperature selection. And down below that, we've got your monitor panel. So you can see right front and center is your pump switch. Turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Then in the bottom, the monitor system. So on the far left, we've got your battery. So you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, it'll go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your gray and your black tanks. So now that that furnace is around for a second, once we're done, we're just gonna slide that all the way over to the left, you hear click, and that's it turned off. You have a TV backer up here. So if you're looking around the TV, you got the power to do so. Power outlet, as well as cable and satellite outlet for it. Again, the blinds just sit where you leave them. The closet space on the side, as well as across the top. And if we pick up the foot of your bed, you do have a little bit of storage space with your hot water tank just over there as well. And of course, again, just don't want to be breaking that. This little floor here, if you pick that up, inside of that garbage bag, you're going to find your spare tire. So that's where that's stored. And that is that. You get the USB charger over on the side, as well as another little light in the top there. And it's just identical sort of closet space over on the other side there. 
So, I do believe that's about it for this little year. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.